Today on the No Pills Podcast, single mothers courting, dating a single mother. Should single mothers be dating? Should they be courting? Can they be courted? Is all hope lost for the single mother? Is she to be in solitude alone until her kids are out of the house? Well, today we're going to look at it on the No Pills Podcast. You're now listening to the No Pills Podcast, your best resource for cultivating meaningful, healthy, long-lasting, romantic relationships that bloom into strong marriages. Welcome to No Pills. Welcome to No Pills. That's with a Z if you couldn't tell, beloved. Love fully scripted. We back. No blue pills, no red pills, just that pill of truth because we needed your unk, your bro ham, your brother from another mother, your main man, G man, brother Gordon. Let's get it, friends. All right, let's get right into it. Without further ado, single mothers, listen, listen, this, I'm a little depressed right now. Okay, I I am l- literally <laughs> this doing research for the episode of this podcast <laughs> brought my spirits down. <laughs> single mothers, single motherhood. I was raised by a single mother predominantly. Should you be courting? Should you be dating? Um, can you find somebody? Will some man marry you, etc.? This was actually a request that came into me via DM uh, from a sister in Christ who wanted to know, have you done a podcast talking about single mothers courting? So here we are. And stick with me all the way to the end, ladies. All my single mothers, stick with me to the end. But I just want to warn you up front, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Okay? It's rough out here. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Let's just start with some s- statistics so we can just get a, f- uh, a a feel for the playing field and what we're up against, ladies. All right. I'm going to do my best to try to help you out. I- I'm not making you any promises, though, but I-, I-, I there may be some light at the end of this tunnel. All right. 10.8 million single mothers in the U.S. So you are competing <laughs> with about 10 million other single mothers for a spouse. All right. Two out of three step family marriages end in divorce in less than seven years. I just want you to know what you're up against. So just bear with me. All right. Uh, Births of unmarried parents in 2022, about 40% of births in the United States were to unmarried parents. This includes births to both single mothers and unmarried couples. All right. Single parent households, according to the U.S. Census Bureau's 2022 data, around 27 percent of children under the age of 18 lived with a single parent. This number reflects households where the child lives with a parent who is unmarried, divorced or widowed. In the U.S., there is a prevalence of single parent households, if you haven't guessed already (laughs) or put that together uh it varies across different ethnic groups as you might imagine but check this out one on the list of uh most single out of ethnicity black or african-american my people my melanated tribe that i'm a part of I, i suppose lord have mercy we are help us help us jesus this group has the highest percentage of single-parent households. Mm, Approximately 64% of black or African-American children live in single-parent families, predominantly with their mothers. Friends, if, if someone has the mindset, ladies, listen to me, if someone has the mindset to avoid single mothers, African-American women are probably going to be the top mothers, people, females that are going to be avoided because of this statistic. Approximately 64%. But I'm not going down that path just yet. We're not there. I'm just putting it out there, ladies. I don't don't know what ethnic group you are that are listening right now, but just number one, 64% of black African American children live in single parent families. God have mercy. Number two, Hispanic or Latino. 
About 40% of Hispanic or Latino children live in single-parent households. Mm. Number three, white non-Hispanic, approximately 24% of white non-Hispanic children live in single-parent households. And just to add a little bit more insult to the injury to the wound, <laughs> insult to the injury, statistically, a child in a single-parent household is far more likely to experience violence, commit suicide, continue a cycle of poverty, become drug-dependent, commit a crime, or perform below his peers in education. <sighs> CNN, I think on some pro celebrate single mothers uh, report uh, back in May 2023 said roughly 24 million or one third of all American children under age 18 are living in an unmarried parent, according to a 2018 Pew Research report analysis. Then he went on to say, um, 81% of those single parent homes are headed by a mom. This has been a growing trend since the late 1960s. The number of kids being raised by mostly single moms has more than doubled between 1968 and 2017. And CNN is celebrating this. Let's now praise single moms. What are they talking about? What are they talking? All right, look. I got online, friends, ladies. I tried to just find anybody who was talking positively, <laughs> who, who, who was saying that there were any advantages to marrying a single mother. I didn't find anything. <laughs> I barely scrounged up this weak list from standardmedia.co.ke that is just garbage, in my opinion, in my opinion, trash, laughable, let me give you let me give you this list they put together for advantages to marrying a single mom. This is tell, tell me what you think. Number one, her love is tested. What? Two, she is more mature. Says who? Three, she knows what to do with money. <laughs> what? I, 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 she has a bigger vision. Is this dependent upon how many baby fathers she has? How many children children she actually has? I mean, like, she knows what kind of man she wants. Does she? Does she? She tends to be more spiritual. Says who? I mean, I don't even know. When I, when I went through this article, there were no statistics. This was just like pulling it out of a... I mean, this was probably written by a single mother. I, if I had to guess, this was probably written by a single mother. Her strength is tested. She appreciates the value of a real man. Who doesn't appreciate the value of a real man? Real men appreciate the value of a real man. From man to man. She offers a family for you to join. That, we'll talk about that in a minute. She will challenge you best. Men, I don't want to be challenged. That just, that sounds like code for she's going to get on your nerves. <laughs> That, that sounds like cold for she's a boss, babe. That sounds cold for, yeah, she's uh, domineering. Just keeping it real. This uh, Number 11, the last one here, your love will be tested. Oh, it will be tested, friends. It will be tested. Stick with me. Hope is not. Okay, so then I said, well, let me turn to the scriptures. Amen. I'm, no pills. Love fully scripted. I said, well, maybe there's some hope in the scriptures. And so I'm looking for single mothers in the scriptures. The bulk of them are widows. Mm. Not baby daddy scenarios. Widows. Anna the prophetess, a widow. The widow of Nan, widow. The widow of Zarephath, widow. Ruth, the Moabite, widow. But the one case of baby mama drama that's right, it's drama in the Bible, where there's a baby mother that has been divorced, separated from her husband, and it was all type of drama, Hagar. I couldn't even believe this. I said, Lord, the, the one account in Scripture where there's a baby daddy scenario, baby mama scenario, Hagar, led to a whole nation of people that <laughs> became ops, Opposition to a whole nation of other people. This is the. 
Hagar was the Egyptian, right, servant of Sarah, friends, Abraham's wife. When Sarah could not have children, she gave Hagar to Abraham to bear her child. You remember this? Hagar became the mother of Ishmael. There was beef. There was drama. Wanted Ishmael to be first. He starts talking smack about his brother. And before you know it, she's getting thrown out. She's got to go. All right? Hit, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Drama. So even as I turn to Scripture, baby mother, baby father, separate, is drama. I couldn't even believe this. You find that in Genesis 16, verses 21. Uh, and also oh, Genesis 16, excuse me, also Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through 12. Out of control. She faced difficulties. She was in poverty. God had to come and save her. She's in the desert ready to die. I mean, being separated from the priest of the home, the, it was terrible. It was t calamity. Calamity, friends. I turned to scriptures and like I felt like I didn't even get any hope from the scriptures in the case of the single mother. I'm like, this can't be real. All right, ladies, so so who can or who will marry you? Court you? Is, is there is there anybody? So I, I I put my head, I put my head on, on this. I said, okay, this guy, this gotta be because it's happening, right? It's happening. Right? This is it is happening, right? Single mothers are getting remarried, married, some cases shacking up. It is happening. I don't know how successful it is if two-thirds of those marriages end within seven years. That's a whole nother question we could have, right, with that statistic that we opened up with. Just saying. So with that being said, ladies, I'm about to, okay, single mothers, listen close now. All right, we're going to train. I'm, I'm going to do my best to give you those individuals that would be potentially interested in marrying you and what you can do to increase the chances of these individuals, these men marrying you. I got you. So just stick with me. All right. A single father. Yes. A single father may be a very practical option for you. Okay. You and him may be in the, in the, in the same place. Maybe you both have one kid apiece. You both can't stand your baby. The parents of your children and you guys have good chemistry. You have the same faith now. I would hope, pray. Oh, come on, come on. This could work. People are doing it. People are getting it done. You could lock this in. You're on the same playing field. You could be evenly yoked. As of the latest data from the U.S. Census Bureau, there are approximately, listen up, 2.7 million single father households in the United States. Okay, 2.7. But let us remember, there's 10.8 million Single mother households in the United States. So, ladies, you got some bad odds there. That means that's one to four. For every one single father household, there are four single mother households. You need prayer, okay? Let me not leave this out. You, ladies, you, you need single mothers. You need to be praying. The odds are stacked up against you. The statistics are not in your favor. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. Listen, I got online and I could not find one positive thing going on with marrying a single mom. This is the culture is not with like you are in trouble. But all hope is not lost. You could find a single father. Another man that may be open to marrying you, a man that is sterile, a man that is not able to have children himself. Good dude, blue collar worker, Heck, might be a CEO, whatever. He just can't have children of his own. You bringing a family to him may be something that he is interested in, okay? Two type of men right there you can possibly marry. And then there's just that sweet guy who doesn't care. Uh, I think the modern world today will call him a simp, but those gentlemen do exist. They're out there. And I actually know some people uh, personally who were raised by a stepfather, but they called him dad. Like, he came on so early, in their upbringing, that they didn't know him as anything other than their dad. And he was integrated as the father. Ladies, take note to what I just said right there. It was successful and it worked because he was integrated fully as dad. Not stepdad. Not he's really not my dad. None of that foolishness. Okay? 
Real people testify to me, friends of mine. Like, hey, it's not my biological dad, but man, I love him. Like, he's my father. And we were just fine. And they respect him and admire him for his sacrifice and what he took on in raising someone else's children. So you got the just the, the sweet guy out of the kindness of his heart. They do exist. But you need to integrate them fully, okay? Got the sterile man. He might be the one. And you got the single father. This is like the best I could do for you, <laughs> okay? I'm struggling. I'm, I'm struggling out here. I'm struggling. Now, listen, the concept of blended families where both parents have children from previous relationships is widespread. Approximately 40% of new marriages in the U.S. involve at least one partner who has been previously married, and many of these new marriages involve children from prior relationships. So it's happening. The success rate, like I said before, is questionable, but it is happening, beloved. It's going on out here. All right. Now, how do you encourage, make this, uh, increase your chances of having a successful relationship, being courted successfully as a single mother? You need to alleviate as much of the fear, concerns, and disadvantages for being with you as you humanly can. So let's go through a few of them. All right. Now, don't get in your feelings. I'm trying to help you out here. Don't be mad. I hope you're not mad. This is just what men are concerned about, what they're fearful about. So you need to do everything on, you need to do everything on your side to alleviate these concerns so that this man can feel safe and comfortable in taking care of you and yours. All right. First thing, a man comes into a scenario to a family that's not here and is not here, not his, and he's expected to lay down his life for this family, for you and the children, the child or children. He's supposed to give all his money, his life, but then he has no authority over the children. Ladies, that's not going to work. Any real man with common sense is getting out of there. That's dumb. That's frustrating. Okay? So if you're not in a position where you can lend a certain amount of authority, disciplinary uh, authority to your husband, your new husband, over your children that are not biologically his, don't even bother. You want this man to die for this child that doesn't respect him, that he has no authority over, and then you side with the child. You're not ready, okay? You're not ready. So you need to alleviate that first concern. Second concern, being emotionally bound or bonded to a child, come on, that's not yours. While there is a living parent, I've been there. I had a stepdad for a while. Love them. Mad love. Mad respect. But at the end of the day, he wasn't my dad. He wasn't my biological father. Just what it is. There's something in the mind, no matter how much respect and love there was, at least in my scenario, because I was a little older when he came along. You know, I was like 12, 11, between 11 and like 12. 13. Just like, yo, I knew who my father was, even though he wasn't around. Didn't matter. I just wasn't looking for that. Not to say I didn't need it. Not to say I didn't need some type of male guidance in my life, but just I was not looking for it. He was never going to imprint on my side as my dad because I had my own father. This is something that the step parent who needs to be the parent is up going, going up against. And then you're going to emotionally bond to this child that can turn around and say, you're not my dad. Ladies, you single mothers, I'm talking to you. You need to know this and factor this in. Like, don't, don't ignore this and expect a man just to eat this. If your child is not in a place to be able to fully integrate and recognize this man, your your new husband, as 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 the dad and giving the respect due him is not going to work. You might be together 10 years, 13 years, 12 years, fall apart, fall apart, straight fall apart, okay? Raising, third thing you need to help alleviate, raising another man's child just does not make practical sense. So it's like, I'm going to put all my eggs in this man's child who then could just run off and, I, like my my genetics are not being furthered and maintained on present earth. Men are into this, man. Men don't like they want they want their seed on earth. So it, it's I think the only way you can combat this is to be willing to give them a child. I don't know how many children you have already. That that could be that could that could be crazy. <laughs> that could not make sense at all. But let's say you had one child. This next man better be your husband. This, this better be it. Lock in. And he's going to want his seed. You got to have another baby. And you got to make sure 
he don't leave you and you don't leave him. So then you then you'll be a baby mama to, to two kids. This is crazy. To two men. With two kids. Okay? But that's a fear. Raising another man's child does just not make sense. It's, it's, it's seen almost in in, in, in in the male community. It's like a stupidity. And why would I do that? Okay. Now, now mind you, this happens and goes on because there is, I think, in, in us men, there's something innate about wanting to provide, uh, about falling in love with children and a woman. And, and th there's, a, there's, a, there's an emotional override sometimes that will happen in the mind of a man, myself included. I'm, I'm also subject to this. When you just, your heart just bleeds for, for children without fathers. Your heart bleeds for a broken household. And you want to try to come in there and be Captain Superman, Captain America over here. And it's like, yeah, bro, you about to be in for a world of hurt. A world of hurt. But if you can alleviate these concerns, ladies, my single mothers, you may be on the road to success. Okay? Now, another concern that men will have, if you have an older daughter, this is a concern for men, that don't like you especially, all she has to do is cry sexual assault, and now you're in quite the predicament and your life is ruined. This is a concern. Don't ignore this concern. You know how your daughter looks. You know how mature she may or may not look. You know the dynamics of that. Know your children. Do not bring a man into that. Men, be smart. Don't walk into that. So, single moms, for you again, this, this whole, your kids, you know, you know your daughter. You know she's trouble or not. Be honest with yourself, okay? Another fear, concern, you need to be able to alleviate for the, for the potential husband, person that's courting you. The biological father will always be present. This is like, oh, it's the worst thing. You know, unless he's dead and you're a widow, this is, okay, now we're cooking with gas. But, you know, a lot of times, let's say, worst case scenario, let's say this, this fool is locked up, the baby father locked up. And then he comes home and now he wants to be reinstated and you only did five, six, seven, ten years. This is a concern that men have. And he, he comes home, now he wants to be dad, hasn't been dad. Now the daughter's like, this is my real father, my dad. Drama, unnecessary drama for the single man trying to be involved with a single mother. Okay? Ladies, I'm just telling you what the concerns are and what you would have to alleviate and make this man know, like, that, that's not going to happen. We're good. Like, I, I don't know what that needs to look like practically. I don't know if you need to award custody somehow, get it in writing. I just don't, I, I don't think it's really getting nowhere. No, you're not getting around that because... Um, understand that the man who's with you, the baby father, he's also marrying in a relationship now with all the family. Your mother, your daddy, your aunties, your sister, and also your baby father. That's a lot. That's a lot to take on. Number six on my list. Men generally believe that they will always become second as the stepdad. And most women would tell you that. Most single mothers will tell you that straight to your face. Like, hey, man, my kids come first. Well, wh what you got me here for then? So if you want to increase your possibilities of actually finding a spouse, you got to get out that mindset, man. And I know that's scary. There's a lot of that's really scary. Like, how do you trust this man? But, but hey, if you want him to marry you, you should, you're going to be one flesh, right? When God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Like, you've, you've got to get to a place where it's not this, my child first, it's us first. Family first. God over man, man over woman, women over child, so to say, but more so, God is the head. Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. Amen? The parents are the head of the children. In that order. In that order. If you're not built for that, stay on single. Keep to yourself, okay? Depending on what state you're in, ladies, you can mess around, come in as the stepdad, husband. She divorces you, you divorce him, and now the state makes you financially responsible for somebody else's kid. Have mercy. Have mercy. Single mothers, just know that the, this is all that you're up against. This was going on in that man's mind, right? So unless you can start to alleviate some of that, make him really feel comfortable, give him some guarantees somehow, 
do what you got to do. This is not a strong likelihood. Like I think a average guy with common sense who doesn't want a bunch of headache is probably going to avoid that. But if he fits one of those three criteria we spoke about earlier, then you might be in good luck. But know that you're highly out. The numbers are not in your favor. There's more single mother households than there. Now, listen, here's the thing. Not only are you up against other single mothers, you're up against single women with no children. That's where the numbers get crazy. Like, not only are you up against 10 million other single mothers, then you're up against other females that are younger, no children. I mean, like, not impossible. Not impossible. But a little bit more unlikely without prayer. <laughs> without prayer. All right, I want to talk to my women that are not single mothers. It may have the dumb idea, because I've, I've heard this, where you're planning to become a single mother. Like, this is your plan. I don't need a man. We don't need men. I just need, I just need his semen. I just need his seed in order for me to give birth to a child. I'm going to raise this baby on my own. We don't need a man. I don't need a man. Single motherhood can be the easiest, most direct path to poverty. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? If you got this weird feminist mindset, third, fourth wave, I don't know what wave you're in. You know, you're waving. You're wavy. You're wavy out there. I don't know what wave, what, what, what wave you're in, but it's stupidity. This will jettison you to poverty being a single mom. And your kids are going to be jacked up. Please get off that train to destruction as fast as possible. Okay. If you think and have the conviction, and I'm with you, that abortions are immoral, that it is a sin, unaliving a child, I want you to keep that same energy and realize that it is immoral, it is a sin to have sex outside of marriage. So stop laying down with men that are not suitable to be your husband and the father to your children. Come on, talk to me. So stop laying down with men that are not suitable to be your husband or the father of your children and having unprotected sex with them and bearing children. You've got to get upstream. I just want to make this appeal to those who are not single mothers yet. If you know better, do better. I'm Gordon McGee. This is No Pills, Love Fully Scripted, and I'm going to catch you next week. I'm signing off.